Hey everybody, Corey here again. Tonight we're back down in the basement to work on another guitar. This one is one of my favorite Stratocasters, if not the favorite. Uh, this is an early 2000s Eric Johnson signature model. Coincidentally, I got this from my friend named Eric Johnson. Uh, I've had it for, I'd say about a year now. I want to say I got it last July, something like that. Um, I play it every day. It's one of my go-tos. Uh, needs a fresh set of strings. Its frets are kind of nasty. So, so we're going to go through what we went through last week and do a good fret polish on this, clean it up real well, uh, make it look good, and then try to do a quick setup on it, just make sure everything's in good working order. Uh, but first, before I tear into any of that, there's an issue with the output jack. It's kind of wobbly. Uh, it feels like the nut is a little loose, so that may be all it is. But since we're in here already, I feel like the smart way to do this is to pull the jack plate real quick. We'll also yank the pick guard on this today like we did last week and just see what's in there. Um, I mean, I'm assuming it's the Eric Johnson signature pickups, but we're going to see. You never know. Sometimes you'll get surprised by something. So... Uh, First, we're going to start with this, though. So let's grab this. Just use this little tool's handy. I like the T-bar. My hands prefer it when you're doing a whole bunch of little screws. All right. That's one. Basically, what we're going to do is pull this out and make sure the solder connections are okay, that there's not any damage to a wire or a connection or that it's not pushing in a bad spot to where it's not allowing it to make good connection. So let's take it out and look here. Can you guys see that okay? Uh, let's see. Ground wire looks good. Hot connections look and feel good. Everything seems firm. It looks like the whole problem just stems from the fact that this is really loose. So we're going to hang on to here. Pull this tip out. i got a socket here handy because I'm just afraid that might be the case. And we'll uh, tighten this bad boy up, see if that solves our connection problems. Go down in here okay, yes. Something you always want to check before you screw one of these back in, grab a cable end and make sure, because once in a while, that it'll go in and go in flush where it needs to be. Because once in a while, one of these will surprise you and not be good at all. Uh, actually, while we're at it here, since we've got the jack plate off, it appeared to have some, some little funky mess under it. So I'm going to go ahead and take my naphtha um, and kind of rub under it a bit, see if we can't get some of that grime out of there. Not that grime's going to hurt how it plays, but just to get a little bit. We're not going to get all of it, I don't think, but that's I'm not looking to get all of it. All right, put the lid back on our naphtha, because the last thing you want is a bottle of that dumping out everywhere. Ask me how I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, this guitar, well, I'll tell you the story while we're putting this back together. About last, early last July, I, I bought a 1976 Les Paul Custom Black Beauty. It was my dream guitar. It was it was beat up, it was beat to hell. Uh, buckle brass spot the size of a saucer on the back. Uh, it had one pickup that wasn't right, so I changed that. Uh, the bridge came with almost an epi style bridge as a few guitars did in that era, because the Northern era, they did all kinds of crazy stuff. And uh, so we retrofitted that with a modern one out of Germany. I can't remember the company's name right now, sorry. And then I took it to an open jam night where my buddy, Eric Johnson, the Eric Johnson I bought this from, not the Eric Johnson. Um, he plays it for a song. 
and he comes out and he says, I have got to have that guitar. What's it going to take? Well, frankly, I had had the guitar for all of about two weeks. I was in love with it. I was still in the honeymoon phase, but I got it for a steal. I got it for $2,200 shipped, um, which is unheard of for a Les Paul Custom in, at any age. And he comes up and he offers me a 2007 Gibson Les Paul Custom Shop R8, the Tobacco Burst guitar. You'll see me playing it plenty in other videos. One of these days we'll get it down here to work on. And uh, I told him I wouldn't do it. And then he threw this in to sweeten the deal, which was essentially about, you know, 5,000 plus worth of guitars. Uh, and the more I thought about it, the more it just seemed like a deal I couldn't pass up. I thought, you know, I know there are other Black Beauties around, uh, and I may still work out a deal to get that one back from him at some point myself. We'll, we'll just have to see. Um, so I still miss that guitar every day, but I would not let go of either one of these to get it back. So, you know, that's the story. This is one of the, the smoothest playing Stratocasters I've ever held in my hands. Uh, I don't know if it's just the, the Eric Johnson accoutrements or if it is something else about it. Uh, it's got a little bit of relicking that's natural. Uh, this has been gigged heavy. Um, the guy I got it from uh, has played professionally for years. Um, so it's, it's, had its, it's had its road time. And he says, uh, sitting at home, for whatever reason, he's, he has dozens of guitars. He says, this is one of those that's just the one you always find yourself grabbing. And uh, I found that to be extremely true for me as well so tonight we're down here polishing it up getting it going so i guess first thing we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to take off the strings so i will get started on that All right, so we've got them all off the headstock now. Something I like to do that I'm sure not everyone does. But maybe, whoa. Something I like to do that I'm sure not everyone does, or maybe they do, I don't know. I like to cut these ends off the strings because, at least on a, on a strat, because you have to pull them through that darn tremolo block and 
when doing that, sometimes these coils get hung up or might scar your tremolo all up. And nobody wants that kind of headache, so I am uh, snipping the ends here. I think that's, oh, one more. Ooh, let's see. These big ones, I have lousy nippers. I need to get a new set. Uh, just haven't pulled the trigger on one yet. All right. Let's take, take those ends, throw them in the trash. Now we're going to give these each kind of half push down just so they're started. We'll flip this puppy over. There's three. And get these other three. There's all three of those. Pull them out. Then I take these and I coil them up and I just tie them in a knot. Tie kind of a bow through them. That way they fit in the trash can easier. And you don't have to worry about a dog yanking one out and nearly killing themselves. One interesting thing about this guitar that I, I hadn't noticed until very recently is it pretty clearly never had a back plate. There are no screw holes back here, um, which I guess is just a trait of the EJ model. I need to do some research because truth is I don't know a lot about the EJ model. I just fell in love with the way this guitar felt and played. I love its neck. It's got a little bit fatter neck with like a soft V instead of a super hard one. And uh, it feels, feels good. It feels great to play. It's smooth. It's fast. Very buttery. Uh, but its frets are starting to get a little dirty. And I think that's somewhere we'll make up a big difference. The other thing you'll notice is this guitar, like I said, it's been played a lot. It's got a lot of dings and scars all around the body. Um, you can see the buckle rash back here that's forming. A bunch of belt impressions that haven't pushed through the finish yet. And then some places it's pushing through, but I like that. Gives it a little character. It's got a few little spots of checking here and there. One thing that's particularly weird that I cannot for the life of me tell you why it was done is it looks like someone has hammered the back plate on this guitar extensively. Let me see if I can lift that up here enough for you. Maybe you can see all the dents and pock marks in that. And so the neck is, uh, I don't want to remove it because I don't know what the story is there, if it's got the wrong screws in it or, or something. But either way, it, it really puts some pressure there, which I'm sure isn't good for it, but it doesn't seem to have affected its playability. So, so who am I to argue? Oh, party foul. I'm throwing M&Ms everywhere. Ah. That boy needs his M&Ms. All right. Set up with five springs. Claw looks good. Ground connection looks good. It's the nice fat block, terminal block, which I like. Back of the neck looks good. Check your check my tuner real quick here. Make sure nothing's loose. Nothing seems to be. All right. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna buzz this pick guard out here. Something you'll notice if you haven't yet is that you know this guitar is essentially a '57 reissue with the Eric Johnson editions. Um. So you'll notice this is a single ply pick guard, which has way less screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, instead of, I don't know, it's 10 or 11 now. I remember reading once that uh, the reason the pick guard screw numbers varied over the years was because someone would come in and show they had a problem and Leo would be like, let's just stick one here. And that's what they did. Uh, so, you know, over time, these single plies tend to warp a little bit, but I'm not too concerned about that. This guitar is very much a player. Uh, it's, as I've said, it's spent many an hour on stage over the years and many an hour playing on a couch. Um, 
but it's uh, it's pretty great. So we're gonna pull this pick guard, see if we can tell anything about our pickups, see what the wiring looks like, see if there's any signatures or codes under the under the bot under the guard and pickups. I noticed I tore apart a parts caster the other night that turned out to be a Jeff Beck signature body. And I notice it's got the great big stamp under the neck pickup here that says Beck in all caps, really large. So what I'm wondering is if this one will say Johnson right there. Guess we'll find out here in a minute. Somebody told, the guy told me when I got this that he believes these are actually custom shop pickups and not the standard ones. Uh, and he referred to them as Eric Johnson Custom Shops, but to my knowledge, there is not an Eric Johnson Custom Shop. You can see right here, they say EJ Neck, EJ Middle, EJ Bridge. Whoa, the soldering is horrendous on this pot. What in the world has someone done? I don't know if you can get a good sight of that. But there is solder from here all the way around the volume pot. It, pots are tricky to solder to. Uh, and a lot of people screw them up royally when they try to do it themselves. The trick to it, at least for me, uh, and I had a hard time with them for a long time too, is that what I do is, you know, galvanized metal has an oil on it naturally. So I take a little bit of sandpaper, or actually first I'll clean it with some denatured alcohol and then I will take some sandpaper and rough up a little spot and then on my soldering iron I'll use a little bit bigger chisel tip than I normally would and lay it on there for just a minute to heat it up kind of rub it around in a circle and usually I can get them pretty good by doing that uh, the nice thing now is I bought a soldering station where with a variable temperature so I can crank this thing up as many degrees as I need to, but you want to be careful because you can ruin the internals of the potentiometer. Let's see here. This says this guitar was built on April 3rd, 2006, assembled either MGO or M60, soldered by JM and another set of initials I can't read. Let's see what's in the in the uh, in the pockets here. I don't see an Eric Johnson, but I see what looks like a C01 down here. Let's see if I can raise these up where you can see them. There we go, that's visible. Got a C01 here, what looks like maybe an S3 or an S8. I'll have to lay it down to look a little more clearly. SB, which may stand for sunburst. There's a red P written here in the in the electronics pocket. Looks like it's painted in or done with a grease pencil or something. All the rest of this though is burned into the wood. All right, you can see the truss rod adjustment is also down here as is the case with the 50s reissues and it's got the old style tremolo with the stamped saddles all right so what we're gonna do is after a quick peek at that we're gonna put her back in and get this part out of the way that'll just leave us at needing to polish and uh, polish clean and string those will be the next steps uh, the truth is this doesn't take that long to do you know you're out maybe an hour if you do it if, if you go pretty in depth I mean like if you're polishing and cleaning your fretboard uh, polishing the body you know all of that takes a little bit of time but not nothing unreasonable uh, and the truth is if it's a guitar you play regularly you should be glad to stick the time in it because it's going to make a difference in how this thing plays all right one more 
little screw to get started. We'll start driving these puppies home. All right. These screws have some have are pretty tarnished. Not all of them, but some of them. So are the screws around the pickups. Oh, that pickup feels okay. I think everything's okay. I was making sure nothing was in a bind under here because that's the last thing you want is a wire and a pinch under there or bulged up. guards back in. Give this another little gentle wipe. We're going to give it a full clean here in a little while, but I want to really get into this pit guard good because there's, you know, hair and dead skin and all that stuff that comes along with being heavily played. see what this fingerboard looks like. I'm going to flip the guitar around here where you guys can watch a little closer. As you can tell, this is the old 50 style headstock. Uh, there's some wear starting to show in the finish on the neck, which is fine. Kind of like that. Uh, in some places, but we're still going to Go through here with the naphtha and clean this this all up real good. Screwdriver to pop this open. Because you can definitely see some grime throughout the fingerboard. So we'll try to... I'm not going to dig to fight it off. But I will give it a good effort to wipe it down. Starting to get some little little marks in the frets here, especially up here. You can see where strings have been pressing, kind of eating at it over time. Um, we're not near to the point of a crown and level yet, but uh, it definitely should be on the radar for the next couple of years I'd say this is a guitar I don't plan on letting go anywhere so all right yeah there we go get this cleaned up good okay next as you'll remember from last week what we're going to do is take our painter's tape that I couldn't find and tape over our pickups because we don't want them to get covered in metal shavings because it's a pain in the ass. Go over this side. Again, this is just very basic guitar maintenance here. We're not, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just helping you with things that most guitar players need to be able to do on their own. You know, if you if you change a tire on a car, then you should be able to change the strings on your guitar and polish some frets a little. Alright. This part here just takes a minute, but it's very important. Otherwise, you wind up with steel wool stuck to every pole on your pickups. As I've said, I don't really know what that affects other than just being ugly and gross. I'm sure 
it could have an effect on the sound, which we obviously don't want. I don't want any of this going on the, on this nitro finish on here. They don't put nitro on many strats anymore and I don't want to screw one up with tape. The relic spot down here is really interesting though because it feels smooth as glass, but if you rake your finger across it ever so gently, you can you can feel the wood grain and tell that the only reason it's shiny still is because it's just had that much hand oil forced through it over the last couple of years. All right. Got my steel wool out here. We're going to see if make sure my little fret protector here will cover good it looks like it will and just like what we did last week i'm going to cover this up and take the steel wool to it now a uh, quick reminder this is very very fine steel wool this is zero 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 you're not wanting to remove fret material all you're wanting to do is polish them well and this does a fantastic job of it it's just a little messy. I wish I had a wider fret guard, but I don't. Okay, let's see. A little more. Want to make sure you get your ends good too, because it can really make a difference. I'm kind of pinching this tight in hopes of being able to keep it off the fretboard as much as I can. I notice some of these frets, as we get a little further down the, down the fingerboard, have some green around the edges, I guess where, I don't know if it's sweat or tarnishing from the, uh, it could be sweat, could be tarnished from strings that have been wet, um, some kind of oxidation, but either way, we're going to work to Get rid of that as good as we can. All right. Doing good here. These are really shining well. I hope you can tell the difference in the video. Right. Let's see. We can use just an end here. So I'm nicking the fretboard a little more than I want to. Doesn't take a lot of time to get these good. Just needs to be done. And uh, like I said last time, I do this every time I change my strings. The other option, if you don't have one of these nifty fret guards, is you can put a piece of painter's tape on each side of the fret, polish it up, and then take your tape and move it down to the next fret. isn't making quite as big a difference as it did last week on the, the, uh, hell, I can't remember what guitar I did last week. All right.
popped off. Get back on it. Yeah. Need more grime on this one. Get a bite off. Okay, almost there. We got 21 of these to do. We're finishing up number 13. You can also see that the finish on the fingerboard comes up the frets fairly high on some of these, more than I thought it did. They always get a little trickier when you get down here to the skinny frets. A lot less space in between the in between your frets and not as much room to go off the end if you need to because you don't want to hit the body. These end frets don't get used quite as much so they're quite a bit cleaner. Last one. All right. Oh, first step is get all the metal shavings out of your nose. Then get them off your guitar finish. That's where I like to start. Cause I don't like that crap sitting on there any longer than it has to. Yeah, you can see where the metal shavings right here have, I guess you're not gonna be able to see it from on the tripod up there, but have circled around each of the pickup poles right here. So we'll wipe all that off. Get out of up there. Another interesting fact, I know the last time we took lemon oil to the fingerboard, but it's not something you do with maple. And maple, you just polish it up a little bit the best you can and let it ride. I, like I said, I usually hit it with the, oh, those frets. Oh, yeah. These weren't as bad, but but they still feel very nice. You can always tell how well strings will slide up these. Um, all right. Next step, we're going to take all this tape off. Then we're going to hit the body with the naphtha. The body and the headstock, because I imagine the headstock needs a little bit of love. Hmm. 
Okay. Get some of the metal shavings off. Man, the one downfall to the steel wool is that it gets everywhere. And there's just about no fighting it. All right, we'll scoot this down a little bit here while we get the, the headstock. Get pretty good. We'll be careful because we don't want to hit that water slide if we can help it. Uh, those water slides are tricky creatures and they're always looking for a reason to come off. And frankly, this one's a little bubbly anyways. So last thing we want to do is give it a reason. Yeah, it's okay though. buzz down this fingerboard one more time making sure it'll get any of those damn uh, little bits of sawdust actually let's start with the back here we want to clean the back get some fresh nafta I always try to be careful around the places where raw wood is exposed just because you don't want to get it in there and have it damage your wood itself and it, it it shouldn't but wet wood is not good so as general rule you want to try to keep anything you can out of there but this stuff dries really fast so i mean if you wipe over it you're not going to destroy your guitar i wouldn't lose a lot of sleep over it. Alright. Goodness. Take the other end of this rag here and kind of polish a little bit. Certainly not taking out any scratches. It's just getting the the playing scuzz off of it. Probably about as good as this back's gonna get. Now, we're gonna clean up this front. Get that really good, because the front was pretty nasty. Oh, and then flipping it over, I laid my pickups into the steel wool shavings. We'll get most of it. Another little trick you can do is if you have a stronger magnet, you can get it near there and it will make a big, it will get a lot of that off. The only one I have right here handy is probably not stronger though. Oh yeah. She's looking good. I need a name for this one. This one doesn't have a name. It's uh I like to I like to name them once in a while. Not that it means anything or makes them play any better, but it makes me feel good. try this. Let's take the magnet. Huh. It actually did pretty good. I don't know if you can tell. Probably not. It's probably not going to focus on this. But it's, it's pulling quite a bit off there. Not a lot of it got on here, just, just a few little spots. I'm just trying to kind of use this as a means of ensuring it's not too bad, cleaning it up. Ooh, there we go, that one. Right. 
Oh yeah, this is actually doing a good job. Let's see if there's anything in here. Yep, all right. That's that. So I guess our next stop here is going to be slapping some strings on this bad boy. Just like last time, I'm gonna throw a set of Ernie Ball 10s on it, regular slinkies, 10 to 46. These are kind of my standard go-to. I've got a couple guitars with nines on them that I'm sort of experimenting with to see if that's a direction I have an interest in going at all. Um, I do like it, but I don't know that it's fit for every guitar. And I certainly don't feel like it with this one. This one's very, uh, it's low. These are super low wound pickups. These aren't super high output or anything like that. So I don't want them to be too crazy. What I'm gonna do first, I'll re-show you last week's trick. I like to, I put all my strings through one at a time. That way I can just flip it over once and be able to get everything ready. But I save these little ball ends right here off of strings I remove. And I take those ball ends and slide them on over, run them down to the end of the new string. And the purpose in that is to take some of the pressure off the string where it bends out over the bridge. So it's not a big deal. It's just... Uh, uh, an old habit I saw somewhere. I can't remember where. I keep wanting to say it might have been a Phil McKnight video, which is possible, but not 100% for certain. It seems like the kind of thing he would teach, but don't hold me to that. I'm sure some of you watch him. He's he's fantastic. He's one of my, one of my favorites to watch and played a role in me finding an interest in working on guitars. Uh, him and, frankly, Dan Earlywine played a big role too. Uh, all right. That's two. string it's right. three in grab this here 17 gauge G get that in leaves them sticking I'm sure you can tell just a little bit out of the back here but once they're tight they won't go in flush but they'll go down to it flush and uh, it's a little different with this bridge with my other bridge it's hollow all the way up with this one the ball won't fit down through we're gonna try it anyways it's it's my go-to and it's not gonna hurt anything strings are cheap so if it comes down to it We'll just get more strings. If it causes a problem, which I don't see a reason it would. Oh, there's an extra ball right there I didn't know I had. Don't want to hear it. I know what I said. <laughs> oh. For the little 10 gauge Oop. all right get 
over, strings through. Scoot this down here so you guys can have a better view while we do this. Um, get my string winder, put that ball back where it goes, and start out with this low E. Okay, this one's these go down in the middle like the ones last week, so we're gonna trim these a bit closer than what I did before. Go about an inch and a half past the tuner. Oh man. Yeah, new new clippers are coming tomorrow. I'm gonna have to go get some. Cause I'm not dealing with that forever as far down in as we can, push it over, push it around, and wind her up. There we go. Looking good. We are gonna go with the little E next. Or whatever. Eh, no, we're not. Let's go with the A string. Pull it long, cut it about an inch and a half over. Flip it. Or hold it while I bend it and break it, which is more accurate to what we're doing there. Push it down in the center, go around. And then we get to get to winding again. Another interesting thing you'll notice about this guitar, no string trees at all. Not even the old school ones. All right, that's two. D string, we'll pull this one long. Nip it about here. Oh, where'd it go? There we go. I got all these darn strings up in the air. You never know what's going to happen. Down inside. Grab this. Get to crank it again. We're going to have this thing done in no time flat. cranking out. Got it down in that nice nut. Good looking bone nut on here. Well cut and well looks like it's look like it's well graphited already too so Four down, two to go. Almost there. Boy, this guitar strings up just beautifully. Super easy. Get this done. Excited to get this done. It's been playing well. But its strings have been pretty nasty for a while now, and it's just not been at the tip top of my list. So uh, when I was looking for something to do for a video, I wanted to do another repair one and thought, hey, let's take that bad boy downstairs. Get this last one cranked on here. Now 
we're going to stretch each of these before we do anything else. When stretching them, I like to grab them in about three places. Tug and hold. Tug and hold. Just giving them time to get used to the tension. get this done before we even give it the first tuning save us a few tunings with any luck oh yeah that sounds nice and dead all right well, we're gonna take a minute I'm gonna tune this up and set up my little practice amp we'll see how it sounds all right folks we're back we're ready We've got this puppy strung up, one of my one of my trusty favorites here, and uh, got the trusty little Vox MV50 rock model set up. This is my, my little bench amp. Uh, it's really handy, sounds great through a 412, believe it or not. Uh, I keep saying I'm gonna get something else for the bench and take this and mount it on my pedal board. All right, clean. Give you a little more volume here. That's on the, on the uh, middle bridge, middle and neck pickup, which is kind of... Go over to the bridge. Let's give her some gain. Back off the volume a little, give it some nasty though. Ready? Ignore that.
feels good to have this with a fresh set of fresh set of steel on it. I'm anxious to get it upstairs, set it into the into the big band, big amps and the normal pedal board and see what we can crank out of it. I really appreciate everyone taking the time to watch today. Essentially this hadn't been anything big, just kind of a restring video, polished it up and maybe kind of show you how to check on a jack, just a little something there. And uh, that's about it. I hope you guys are enjoying these kind of videos. I have a lot of fun doing these because I spend a lot of time tinkering anyways. So it only makes sense to have my camera going and get some content out of it while we work to grow this thing. Uh, if anybody has any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments or shoot me an email at armchaircorey, C-O-R-E-Y, at gmail.com. And I'd love to get with you, talk a little, and see if I can help you find whatever you're looking for. Otherwise, we'll catch you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the little bell. Uh, that really helps us a lot as we go. You guys have a great week. See ya.